ask you the initial test, the first test that you're going to order, what would it be? And the answer is, you know, EKG, right? EKG, electrocardiogram, because, you know, electrocardiogram is a gold standard for, uh, for myocardial, myocardial infarction. EKG is the first thing that you order. And, and you know, that, that's, that's, that, uh, with EKG, you can see the difference, you know, um, initially. You don't have to wait for, you don't have to wait for like blood draw to see like some, some kind of lab value. When the patients come in, you can do an EKG right away. And you're going to see that, you know, maybe this patient has acute MI and stuff like that. And normally with EKG, you know, you see, you see the electrical, electrical activity of your cardiac cycle of your heart, right? And all that, all that up and down, up and down, like what, what are they? You know, like that's actually, you know, these waves, I'm going to explain to you real quick. Normal, for normal EKG, that's a P wave, right? And then that's a quick QRS complex. So, so P and then QRS, and then that's a T, T wave, right? On the first thing when you look at on the EKG, the P wave, what is that? P wave actually your atrium, uh, depolarize, depolarizing. So your atrium, the top part of your heart, contracts, right? And you're gonna see that as a P wave. And then you're going to have the QRS complex. That's QRS complex like that. Like quick wave like that. QRS complex. That's when your ventricle contracts. That's the bottom half of your heart. That's when that contract. That's the QRS complex. So P, P wave. Atrium. Atrium contraction. QRS complex. That, that's the ventral contraction. And then you have the T, the T wave, the T wave is the is the repolarization of your ventricle. So your your ventricle, like you know, returns returns to the normal shape after contraction. And one thing that we're missing on the EKG is your atrium uh, repolarization. That actually happens during the QRS complex. So when the ventricle contracts, your atrium will repolarize. But you don't see that on the EKG because you know when you when 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 your ventricle contract, that activity is so big. It's a big activity that, that it masks your atrium repolarization. Okay. So normally when you look at the EKG, you see a Q, you see a P wave, P wave. That's your atrium contracting. And then you have the QRS complex. QRS complex, that's, that's your ventral contracting. And then you have your T wave. And your T wave, as I said, is your, your ventral repolarizing. Your, your, your ventral returning to the normal shape is dilating. Right. And then what happens? What will you see on your EKG if the patient has acute MI? If the patient has acute Myocardial infarction. You might see, uh, you might see, um, an elevate, elevate ST, an elevate ST, right? Or you might see a, uh, um, a depressed ST, depressed ST, or you might see a Q wave, right? And these were signified to the doctor when, when the doctor's reading EKG that this, that this person might have acute MI. So if you see like an ST elevation or Q, or Q wave, what does that mean? That means that the patient maybe has, um, myocardial infarction, uh, that is, uh, something we, we call a transmural infarction. Transmural infarction is that, uh, that, um, that there's a no necrosis of the whole thickness of the left ventricle, like the whole the whole muscle of the left ventricle, uh, um, is infected. And necrosis, you know, I want to explain this word. Necrosis means that the heart muscle, the cardiac muscle, is dead, and it's dead because there's not enough blood to come and you know come and give like nutrients, come and give an oxygen to 
to to the myocardium to the to the heart muscle so so the heart muscle dies and the transmural infarct just means like you know the whole thickness of the left of the heart of the left ventricle the whole thickness of the wall um uh, is is infected it's 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 the whole cell is dead because there's not enough blood and you're gonna see that as a q wave on the on the e k g or s t elevation and that's transmural infarction and i said that's that's the whole thickness of the wall uh that 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 that, that the cell and that the tissue is dead and um Another form of infarction is called um, is called subendocardial infarction, and that basically means that only the inner wall, only inner wall of the heart muscle, only in the wall of the myocardium is 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 is, is dead. It's it's in it's infected, and uh, and um, what are you going to see if 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 it's uh, um, subendocardial infarction? You're going to see uh, ST depression is is a non ST elevation infarction. So you can see the ST wave like like uh, going down like that, right? Uh, so you're gonna see that, and that basically means that your coronary your coronary artery is like it's not fully clogged. Your coronary artery artery might have like a little bit of atherosclerosis or might might have a little plaque that. The blood goes still coming to the to the inner wall to the wall of your heart, but you know it's not coming enough to the in 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 inner wall of the myocardium. So the inner wall, the myocardium will be infected, and uh, so that's what that's what you're gonna see in your EKG. In your EKG, you might see, as I said, a Q wave, ST elevation or ST depression. And that's going to tell the doctor that this patient has acute myocardial infarction. And as I said, this this answer to this question, EKG is the best answer because EKG does the initial test. But you know, all the answer here is correct. All the answer here is correct because at some point, all these all these markers are going to show up. Like if you do a blood test, uh, let's say. Um, aspartate amino transferase that's going to show up uh two days after the patient have myocardial infarction but it's not specific that comes up if the patient has myocardial infarction but it comes up two days later but also if the patient has some uh liver disease or or skeletal muscle disease aspartate amino transferase will show up in your blood blood test too so it's not specific for for myocardial infarction and uh, CK, CKMB, um, create, uh, creatine kinase myocardial uh, bound, that shows up about six hours. You know, that shows up about six hours in the blood after the patient has MI. But, but you know, that's six hours wasted, you know, like, like EKG, the patient, when the patient comes to the hospital, they can do an EKG.